Okay, so up to this point, we've done electric fields with a point charge and forces, and we've looked at what the force would be between two charges. The one thing I haven't explicitly said is that electric fields, just like forces, are summative. So what we, the term we use is there is a superposition of electric fields that yield your net electric field at some given point. So just to remind us, we have our two definitions. Let's see, we can go, let's see, a force, Coulomb force, we define as the electrostatic constant and the interaction of two different charges divided by the distance squared that those charges are separated. And we defined the field as, let's see, our electrostatic constant, that didn't change, the charge, <laughs> couldn't make up my mind. Hold on. Let me uh, make that a pretty Q. Couldn't make up my mind if I wanted a capital Q or lowercase Q. Well, let's go with an uppercase Q because we're looking at only one charge at a time. So that's the charge creating the field divided by the distance away that you're measuring that field strength. If you look at the handout that I have for uh, this week for, well, this is all of this week as this is one lecture. Um, I have in there doing the fancy sum, and if you haven't seen it before, just a reminder that the symbol here just means that we're taking the sum of everything. And we have it for the net charge. The equation that I have written up there is that my E net is gonna be the sum of my E total of each individual E. So my E net is gonna equal, let's see, we go F on Q, I'm cringing a little bit over the wording of that, divided by Q. Other way of saying that is that, remember, our electric field is just the net charge per Q. So the ability to exert a force, a Newton, on a charge, once I multiply a Q times an electric field, now I have just a force. So remember that our electric field has the units of Newtons per Coulomb. So the overall force is just going to be dependent then on however big the Q is that interacts with it, the charges that interacts with that. So that would be a force. That's all this notation that your book is trying to get you comfortable with saying. It's just the amount of force per charge is how we define the field strength. So now let's take a step back. What I have drawn here is we can think of this as being like a, a negative, whoops, a negative charge and a positive charge. That's why the two different colors. And I am going to look at a number of different places and think in terms of just vector behavior. If these are ideally equally spaced apart, ideally my drawing isn't so much so, um, what's going to happen to our field strength at different points? That's why I have it copied several times. And kind of a spoiler alert, you see this organization of charges referred to as a dipole. It just means you have a positive end and a negative end on um, a given charge arrangement. So it's just a dipole. But this thing, what I'm going to show you works whether they're both negative, both positive, or a dipole. But let's take first going with opposite charges, so a dipole itself. If I chose a spot, say, here, and remember, that little black dot represents my probe charge. And my probe charge helps me determine what direction the electric field is going with respect to the charge that I'm interested in. So I'm going to start with the negative charge on the left each time here. And then we'll look at the positive charge on the right. And if my probe charge is defined as a teeny, teeny, tiny little positive charge, what's going to happen with respect to that negative charge in the left hand corner? Well, I'm going to have an electric field going towards that negative charge. And that just follows our rules. That's the one thing I keep trying to remind everybody of where I said electric fields go into negative charges and out of positive charges. So that helps me get to the next one. Now I want to look at the probe charge with respect to this positive charge over here. Well, what's going to happen there? 
I'm going to be repulsed away from, and I'm trying to do kind of like a straight line thing. So I'm going to be repulsed away from going like that. Let's make that a different color. Oh, it's not going to. Fine, don't. So what do I have? If they are the same size and I chose straight down the middle between the two, then the nice thing here, this is one thing, actually let me label these. Let's just call this like E1, because I'll call this 1 and I'll call this 2, and this E2. If I have picked a center spot, and I'm emphasizing this for a reason, then I'm going to have this thing called symmetry, which is going to make my life really easy or easier. How's that? Not quite so icky. Probably better. I can look at this and I'm going to say, okay, from both of these, the way I can draw my vector components is coming out from here and going this way would be my E in the X. So this is my E in the X. It is pointing in the negative direction. That means that component is negative. It doesn't matter if I'm looking at the positive to the positive or the negative to the positive test probe charge. If it's going in the negative direction, it's going to have a negative sign for that component. And then I can come over here and I want a different color. I don't know why I didn't choose that. Coming down in my Y, that is going to be my Y component for one of those vectors. So here's my E in the Y. And then here is going to be my Y component for the other vector. Now my emphasis on the symmetry is that if they're the same size and I chose a midpoint in between, so they're both having equal impact, this over R squared portion is the same, then that means my Y components for both would cancel out. So there's my E and the Y. This is E from 1. This would be E and the Y from 1, and this would be E and the Y from 2. Notice my E and the Y from 2 is positive. It's heading up. So it's the vector that makes it negative or positive, not the sign on the charge. And the same with my E and the Y is negative because it's going down. My E and the X is negative for both because they're both heading towards the negative axes, at least how I've drawn it here. So in the end, what would I have? I would do the same thing that we've been doing with our forces, that I'd have then my E and the X is going to be EX1 plus EX2 is going to equal my E total. And as I'm using X, I'll just go ahead and do this in the X hat. And my E in the Y, whoops, I should make sure I didn't include a sign there. So those are both going in the negative direction. My E in the Y, what do I have? I have E in the Y2 is going up. E in the Y2, E in the Y1 is going down, so minus E in the Y1 is going to equal my E total in the Y hat. My net electric field, the resultant of those two components, so my E net then, if I wanted to write that, is going to be my E total in the X, E total X hat plus E total Y hat. Then you put your signs in there. The resultant vector, the magnitude of my E net, that becomes Pythagorean because what, what have I done here? Well, I'm going to come up with um, a coordinate system for my X and my Y pieces. So I made a right triangle. If I've made a right triangle, then it becomes just Pythagorean to get to what the magnitude of my E net is. So it'll be my E in the X squared plus my E in the Y squared. And now it's time to give me, for me to give you the reminder that the one thing you don't want to do is put in your negative signs unless you're really 
good friends with your calculator because this step here it's a great place to make a mistake and accidentally subtract terms you don't mean to so let's see well that was a lovely um, what do we define this as we define this as negative and this is positive now let's check a point out here pause come back and define for yourself what direction your vectors are going to go with respect to our two charges. Okay. So let's see. Oh, my dog is being very nice for us today. So this is, I'm going to start here with my positive, whoops, with my positive charge just because it's the closer one. So my positive tiny, tiny test probe charge is going to be repelled. From the positive charge it's closest to and it's going to be attracted to the negative charge that it is farther away from seeing as they're the same in magnitude and my distance let's do this as an arrow and my distance is bigger over R squared while this isn't going to be precise I know that my my magnitude of my negative electric field is going to be smaller. I'm further away from it. So I can look at this without having any numbers. So long as I know that they're the same in size, without having any numbers, I know that I have hair in my face, that the, uh, mag the magnitude of the electric field, the net electric field is going to be to the right. So no math, I can just look at this and say my E net will be to the right. It's going to be that away. And if I wanted to write this, I look at this, I'm like, hey, that's only x components are kind of like that and it is kind of nice when you just pick an easy spot right so my e net let's see we're calling this e1 oh e2 i want to be consistent and this is e1 so my e net then is going to be e2 if i define this as positive e2 minus e1 and let's remind ourselves these are vectors. Now the nice thing is that the magnitude of that electric field, well it's still following this E net as the square root of my E in the X squared plus my E in the Y squared. Well we only have an X component, right? So once I put numbers in here and solve for those things, it's going to be just whatever that difference is. Well if I square it and take the square root, I just get it back. So this answer here for this particular case because it's only in one dimension is the net electric field. All right, be consistent. Call it this minus and this plus. And what did I say? Call that one and that two. One and two. Now I'm not gonna, let's see, I'm gonna throw it a little bit off. Ooh, ooh, ooh. let's stick with black let's stick with black I'm gonna test over here so I'm at a bit of an angle and I'm gonna call this I don't know let's call this L and we'll call this L over 2 and this L over 2 I'm leading into we're gonna do a little bit of math with this let's pause this do your vectors and start defining your angles. And actually I'll call this, ooh, see that's L over two. Okay, no, I'm just making that too ugly right out of the gate. Let's not do that too ugly. Let's start off a little bit nicer out here. So this is L over two. Okay, now pause. My test probe charge is at L over 2 on the x-axis and down L on the y. So do your vectors and um, go ahead and do your sum. Define your angles. Define your angles only in terms of L. Don't let yourself put numbers in there. Let's now move to the next step of what I want you to be in the habit of doing is being able to simplify things. So pause and then come back. And actually, I'm going to stop this video and come back and make a separate one so this can be nice and detailed.